This colony was strong enough, and the mass of bees was enough to give us one shook swarm. Because the supers contain no frames of brood, this method makes certain that no drones, nor a queen, get into the shook swarm. The presence of drones would cause unnecessary unrest and could lead to overheating and the death of the bees through suffocation. The swarm boxes are covered with wire gauze on two sides in order to provide good ventilation. At this time of the year, the ideal weight of a shook swarm is around two and a half pounds of bees. After thumping the swarm box firmly on the ground, the funnel is removed and the lid is put in its place. The queenless shook swarm is now taken to an airy, shaded place. Every colony is treated in this way. All shook swarms remain in the shade until they are ready to be taken away. The supers are now strapped together and are loaded onto a trailer. Finally, the swarm boxes with the shaken bees are put on the trailer. It is important that the swarm boxes have adequate ventilation during transport. Having reached the extracting shed, the shook swarms are unloaded first and are set down outside for their varroa treatment. The trailer with the honey is driven into the shed for extraction. Several chemicals have been officially approved for the control of varroa mites. Here we administer a systemically acting remedy. After all shook swarms have been treated, we turn our attention to the catching of the mated queens. First, the queen is clipped with fine scissors. One third of one forewing is removed to prevent her from flying. She is then put into an introducing cage and this is closed firmly. After again thumping the swarm box firmly on the ground, the queen cage is suspended by wire among the bees.
For the next 24 hours, the swarm boxes are taken to a cool room where they are put down on sheets of white paper for a simple assessment of the extent of Varroa infestation. Because shook swarms are artificially created swarms and bees have an empty honey stomach, they must be given some food soon. Here they are fed with goods candy made from honey and icing sugar and the room is darkened. Once the shook swarms have been dealt with, we return to the out apiary and attend to the control of swarming in the parent stocks and the putting on of supers. Checking for signs of imminent swarming is, again, done by looking into the passages between combs. Although a lot of bees of the adult population had been removed, colony strength is still sufficient to take advantage of any expected flows of nectar. The wax drawing combs full of sealed varroa infested drone brood are cut out again. All other colonies are treated in the same way. Empty honey supers are put on last. At this time of the year, the supers are filled with drawn comb because bees tend to fill drawn cells more readily. The sequence of events, which has been shown here in two stages, first the removal of a shook swarm, followed by swarm control and adding supers, can also be completed in a single operation. After adding supers, the old colonies are ready again for the next crop. The various flowers of the forest or the avenues of lime trees are suitable crops of summer. They produce floral and honeydew honeys. back to treatment of the shook swarms. After a one day period of confinement, we remove the remnants of the candy from the shook swarms. On the paper underlays, we will find some debris and dead varroa and can evaluate the mite infestation of the shook swarms. The debris consists mainly of sugar crystals and wax scales and the oval bodies of dead varroa can easily be distinguished.
During the period of confinement, the bees have fused into a small colony and their contented, quiet clustering shows this clearly. The shook swarms will be given new brood boxes. These should contain one to two combs with sealed honey, as well as frames of drawn comb which had been removed from the parent stocks. For transport, the entrance holes are plugged with paper. Before hiving the shook swarms, the bees in the swarm boxes are sprayed with water. This prevents their flight. At the same time, we remove the caged queen. Now we dump the bees into the open space of the deep floorboard in which the front entrance has been closed with wire gauze. An inner floorboard is put on. This is followed by the prepared brood box. The queen cage is suspended between two frames and the plastic foil and the roof are put on last of all. The bees remain in the dark room overnight they need a little time to clean out the honey moist combs. Experience has shown that when such package bees are left in confinement overnight, they are more harmonious and content. The following morning, these freshly established colonies are taken to their new apiary. This should have been chosen to assure an ample supply of nectar and pollen for all. Giving a puff of smoke, we remove the wire screens from the entrance. Only the small upper entrance above the deep floor is opened. This picture shows the calm, settled condition of the colony. The cage with the queen is removed and is returned after the wooden plug has been replaced with one of candy. After a few hours, the bees will have opened the passage to release the queen. This slow introduction facilitates her acceptance. <laughs>